G'day everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Spencer V. Chapman and I'm coming to you from Australia. Uh, we're reading through the Bible and today we're up to Genesis chapter 37 and it's really starting to get interesting now. It feels as though that the all of Genesis is leading up to this point with Jacob's family line. In the previous few chapters, we found out that Jacob's name has been changed to Israel. He's got 12 sons and one daughter. Lots of different things have been happening, especially with his brother Esau. The town's been wiped out. There's people sleeping with every other person and Tom, Dick and Harry. So it's a bit crazy. God's still blessing them. There's still lots going on. But this particular chapter that we're just about to go through really kicks off some interesting stuff. It seems as though it feels like it's led up to this point. This is going to be happening. We're a few chapters away from the book of Exodus. It really starts to get really interesting, okay? It's about Jacob's sons and one in particular called Joseph. So let's pray and let's get into it. It's going to be a good one. And uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down the bottom. Dear Lord, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. Uh, we pray, Lord, you open our hearts and our minds and our ears uh, to learn more about you, to learn more about your word and what's happening in Genesis, uh, especially with Jacob and his family at this point. We thank you, Lord. We pray whoever's watching this, Lord, wherever they may be, that you'll give them peace, help them with their lives, whatever's going on, and that we may find some peace from your word. We thank you in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Genesis chapter 37. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he had made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to run? over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream and this time the sun, moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off to the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. 
After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agree. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. And that is the end of Genesis chapter 37. Right, this is a good one. I like the story about Joseph. It really is quite intricate. They go into a lot of detail about what their brothers are thinking, what they're doing, what they actually do, and what happens to Joseph. In the following chapters after that, it's a great story. Many movies have been made about this, but it really is interesting. You really get to see Joseph's brothers and also Jacob and what he does and how they think and how they work. And it all comes to a head because in the previous chapters, we've heard about what Jacob Jacob's sons alike. They destroyed a city, they deceived a whole lot of people after their sister was raped by killing all the men. They take the plunder and the women. It's really interesting. You don't think that these, you think the guys are just good guys, but realistically, you know, they're murderers, really, when you think about it. God is still blessing them, and it really is incredible. In this particular chapter, you can see their mind at work, how they really are, and how God uses Joseph to save them. We see that later, giving you a little bit of a, a tip there. Let's have a look at Genesis chapter 37. Let's really see what's going on. It's the account of Jacob's family line. So also too, when we read this, you've got to realize Jacob's name, even though his name is Jacob, God has changed it twice to Israel. Keep aware of that one. Joseph here is only 17 years old. You know, he's probably got a chip on his shoulder. He's quite young. He's a bit naive. Might even be up himself a little bit. Uh, you know, we, we don't really know his temperament at this point, except he has no problem going through his brothers and saying, hey, I had a dream that you're all going to bow down to me and worship me you know so obviously he's a bit cocky all right he's a bit full of himself might be a bit snobby he's the favorite son he's one of the youngest ones the only one that's younger than joseph at this point is benjamin but benjamin is obviously a lot younger than joseph benjamin's probably only just a teenager maybe 13 we don't know you know joseph's 17 this point. Young man, he's getting quite full of himself because he's had these dreams. His brothers obviously don't like him because of this. They don't like him because he's been spoiled. He could be a spoiled little brat. We don't know. He's being spoiled in a way that his father has made this beautiful robe. Now, a robe is quite large. We don't know. It no, doesn't exactly say how it's decorated, but it's quite ornate, which means it's really over the top. And obviously, the other brothers, and there's 11 of them, haven't been given that either. So they're quite upset, to say it mildly, to the point that they want to kill him, okay? It has to get... I mean, you've got to realize these guys have killed before. These guys have murdered people before. They, they, they know how to do it. They're not scared of it. They've done it. For them to then say, hey, we're going to kill Joseph, it's not a big leap. If you were to take the other chapters out of the equation and you didn't know that they'd wiped out a whole town, then you might think, oh, that's, that's crazy. You know, why would they want to kill Joseph? But if we take everything into consideration that we've been going through, these guys have killed. They know what it's like. They have no hesitation to kill their own brother, except for Reuben, because Reuben wants to do the right thing. <laughs> which is actually surprising, because in the previous chapter, Reuben slept with his brother's mother, which was his stepmother. So anyway, this is just messed up. If we keep going, his father, Jacob, Israel, has kept everything in mind, and Joseph's gone off to find his brothers. Now, they talk about a cistern. If you're not quite sure what a cistern is, a cistern is like a well, and at this point, it looks as though it's the dry season, because they say the cistern is empty, but it's a big hole, basically. A big hole in the ground. And sometimes in the wet season, obviously they would fill up and they would use these cisterns as a, a water reserve to water the sheep. But it was empty, so they threw him in it because they didn't like him. They wanted to kill him and they were going to kill him. No doubt. They, they, they tasted blood before. They've killed other people before. So they were, going to, they were literally going to kill him. But Reuben's going, no, no, let's not do that. You know, in verse 26, it says, well, what do we gain if we kill our brother? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then they, they find a way to get rid of him. So they don't want to kill him. They, they realize, well, yeah, it's probably not a good idea to kill him, even though they could, even though they were going to. They're going, let's get some money. Let, 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 let's sell him. Let, let's get some money for him, for him, get rid of him. 
he's gone, we haven't really killed him, but we're gonna tell our father that he's dead. So it's still, it's, it's pretty sick really when you think about it. They're gonna sell their brother for money. Jesus was sold for money, so just keep that in the back of your brain. They're gonna get rid of him for money. They're gonna take the robe, which they did, covered it in blood, ripped it apart, and they deceived their father even their own father to say, hey, he's been killed. The ramifications and consequences of their actions we find out later on, but it's not a great thing. It, th these guys are not good, okay? As much as we think, oh, Jacob, Israel, yay. But really, no, no, no. Their sons were terrible. Their sons were murderers. Their sons were absolutely vile and they wanted to kill their own brother. We don't hear much about um, Benjamin at this point. He may or may not have gone with the brothers, obviously, to tend the flock, so he may or may not have been involved. We don't know, but it is an interesting one to think about. Was Benjamin involved in Joseph's selling, deceiving their own father? We don't know. If we go to the end of the chapter, Jacob is not well. He, he is not well at all. And he's mourning what's going on here. Also too, it's the first time we hear about Egypt, Midianites being sold, Egypt and Potiphar is named for the very first time. And we find out more about him also later on in the chapter. It's also interesting to know that throughout the chapter, you hear about Israel and Jacob, right? So do take into consideration that Jacob is Israel. All right, so don't don't get confused with that. It's the same person. What do we get out of this one? This is a, this is a doozy. We know that in these particular days it's not weird or strange for a man to have multiple wives and Jacob has got four of them he's got Rachel and Leah and the two servants from these four ladies he's had 12 sons and it also mentions in this chapter which is rather interesting he had other daughters so it wasn't just one we thought it might have only been 13 because of the his his other daughter was raped in the previous chapter but he had other daughters so they're not mentioned okay so even though joseph's dream is in relation to his 11 brothers the dream does not talk about his sisters so obviously the sisters are not part of whatever it is and we're going to find out more about that later but that is a very interesting one that at this point the women are not included in any of this stuff joseph's dream was specifically about his brothers and even his parents that were bowing down to him that is very interesting but again what do we get from this what what can we put into our lives about all of this i always mention god's love and god's love is pretty incredible and at this point it still is okay you've got 11 guys that want to murder their brother they've murdered other people before yet God is still blessing them God is still making ways for things to happen because unbeknownst to these guys and I'm gonna spoiler alert here unbeknownst to these guys Joseph goes to Egypt in Egypt there's a famine there's a famine throughout the land and they actually get saved because Joseph was sold but here's the kicker what would have happened if they hadn't have sold Joseph Joseph still had that dream if they hadn't have sold him to Egypt, would he have gone to Egypt? If they hadn't have tried to kill him, would he have been sold? If they'd done the right thing, what would have happened? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Because God's will will always be done. God would have made a way anyway. Even if they didn't do the wrong thing, even if they didn't sell him, even if they didn't do all of that other stuff, God still would have found a way for Joseph to get to the position that he that he finds himself in. But in this point, what they do, the bad things that they do, God makes something good come out of the bad. And the good thing is, is that as we find out in chapters to come, Joseph saves them because of the evil that they even decide to do. God uses Joseph to save the whole area and even Egypt. Everything is saved because of Joseph. Even though something evil was intended, something good becomes of it. But the question is, is if they didn't do anything evil, would Joseph still have been in that place in the, and, and would Joseph still have gone to Egypt we don't know but we can see that for us even if we stuff up even if we make a mistake even if things are done badly God can still bring something good out of it even if you do something bad God, God can still do something good if we go to him and that is always the key it's always the key if we do something bad you want it to turn around like in this particular instance it does and we're going to find that out in the next chapter God can still make something good come out of something bad because God is God God can do that because God loves you that much. So no matter what's happened in your life, good, bad, or otherwise, if we focus on following God, we focus on Him, then the good things will come. We go to God to have a real relationship with God, and then it can become good the way it's meant to be, not in a bad way. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what's happening with Jacob's family, with Joseph and the brothers. We thank you, Lord, that you bring good out of the bad that we're going to see in the next few chapters. We thank you, Lord, that Joseph was saved and that we can see this as an example of your love 
for us. And uh, pray, Lord, you'll be looking after the people that are watching this and hearing this, that you will bless them and keep them safe. And we pray these things and ask these things in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down the bottom. And we'll see you again next time to see what happens with Joseph. Exciting stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.